Hi, this is Oren Zucker, and on behalf of Dan Everts, welcome to the first official Motion Monkey tutorial. Okay, we're going to get started with a layered layout created in Illustrator. The first thing I need to do is set the work area to the amount of time I want the layers to be distributed across. Now I'm going to launch Motion Monkey, and using the default settings, I'll just click Do It. And this is what we come up with. If we don't like it, all we have to do is undo it and redo it, and I'll get a whole different variation. With a few simple clicks, you could come up with something like this, or this, this, this. Motion Monkey was built to be very intuitive. There's really not much you need to know that you can't figure out in five minutes of playing with it. The right side of the UI is similar to some of our past tools, so I'll repost parts of those tutorials at the end of this one. One new feature we introduced is cooler compatibility in the color palette section. By clicking on the K, you can load ASC color files that can be downloaded from cooler.adobe.com. The left side is the animation system. It's broken down into motion, direction, anchor, transition, interpolation, speed, intensity, and the motion mixer switch. The first thing you need to know is that these buttons here indicate a random selection within that section. When it's on, it will assign each layer one of the options within that section. So by default, motion is selected to random. That means slide, scale, spin X, Y, Z, and none are all possible. Selecting any one of these options will turn off the random button. You can select one or more checkboxes from any section. The easiest way to illustrate what it does is to start simply. I'll select one checkbox from each category. Slide, left, easy stop. You'll notice that since I didn't select scale or any of the spins, their direction is not active. Once you click on one of them, their direction area becomes live. I passed over the anchor because it really doesn't come into play unless you have scale or spin selected. So once we set the work area and click do it, we get something like this. Change the order to random, and we get this. Add a direction. And change easy stop to bounce. The more options selected, the more variations you get. Moving down, speed has four options fast, medium, slow, and random. The next drop-down is intensity. It refers to the overall strength of the motion selected. In effect, the higher the intensity, the faster and more energetic the animations will be. The last option is motion mixer. When this box is checked, it'll take a certain percentage of the layers and combine multiple types of motions into one move, assuming you have more than one selected in the motion section. The end result will be more complex animations. It won't combine different types of slides, scales, or rotations, but it will combine one of each, say a slide and a rotation, or a scale and a slide. For more on these and other sections, check out the user's guide, the product page on AE Scripts, or our website, typemonkey.net. So that's it, the first pass of what you need to know. On behalf of Dan Everts, I'm Oren Zucker, and enjoy your motion monkey. There's two basic types of layers we deal with, those with a time factor and those without. Those without include stills, text, solids, and shapes. They're pretty straightforward and need no special attention. Time factor layers are anything that can have time remapping applied, like video or pre-comps. We've added timing controls to give you some options for dealing with them. Before we go over those, we're going to go through controls that are common to all types of layers. In the Layers section, the first drop-down is Order, which refers to how the layers are sequenced in the animation. There's three options, from the top, which means the top layer will appear first. 
and there's bottom and random. Skipping over timing controls, we get to the palette section. The color palette is similar to the original Type Monkey, but it's defaulted to off. When activated, it'll apply a fill effect to your layers with your selected colors. However, videos or pre-comps won't be affected by the fill. If for some reason you want those filled, you can do that manually after the build. Lastly, we included a new shy and lock option thanks to a suggestion by Perry Kroll. By unchecking the box, Layer Monkey won't lock or hide the layers. This will come in handy if you plan on going in and making extensive changes after the build is done. As I mentioned, timing controls are needed for any layer that has a time element to them. The controls are mainly located in the Layers section, but there is one in the Markers section too. When Layer Monkey comes across one of these layers, it automatically applies a time remap to them. The first drop-down in Timing Controls dictates where you want the first keyframe of the time remap triggered. It defaults to Markers, which means it'll start playing when it reaches its marker on the timeline. The second option is at the zero point, which means no matter where it's triggered by the marker, the playback will start at zero. The video will be in progress when it's revealed. This might come in handy if you already have an edit pre-built and you just want transitions between shots. The out point gives you control of what happens at the end of the clip. It's defaulted to freeze. You can also have it run out, loop, or ping pong back and forth. The third control is hidden in the distribution section of markers. This is a new section we added and it's defaulted to evenly spaced just like Type Monkey. Marker sync is also found there as well as our time related play full clips option. When this is selected, all the clips within the comp will play out in full before transitioning to the next clip. You'll notice that the in point option is now deactivated when it's selected. Check out the user's guide for more details on this option. As with Type Monkey, adjusting timing is as simple as sliding markers. A couple of points need to be made about how the markers handle the time remap layers though. Moving a marker will only change a transition point. It won't speed up or slow down a time remapping. If you want to do that, you're going to have to pre-comp it and do it in there. If the marker expands past the time the layer runs, then the out point effect will come into play. For example, if you have a freeze selected, when the clip ends it will freeze until the next marker triggers a transition. 